Hi, I'm Melissa Bremer. I'm Professor of Arts Education at the Amsterdam University of the Arts in the Netherlands. And today I'm going to talk about the project, My Music Ability. So before I talk about the actual project, I'd like to discuss the background of the project. So literature shows that music educators can unconsciously play a role in upholding at least some of the barriers for persons with disabilities to access music education. Now, the reasons for this could be is that teachers may be unfamiliar or lack experience with adaptive or assistive music instruments, but or with pedagogical approaches such as universal design for learning or figure notes. Or teachers may be anxious to work with persons with disabilities because they might fear that they will not be effective educators, or they may be unfamiliar with the lived experiences of persons with disabilities and therefore design solutions that do not really fit the needs and wishes of people with disabilities. So, however, if we take a closer look at the teacher's reservations to be involved in inclusive music education, we might see that those reservations might be understandable as they may hardly have been given resources, pedagogies or ideas for working in inclusive music education during their teacher training courses. So as a teacher trainer, I think we should ask ourselves the critical question, how well prepared are our students for the field of inclusive music education? So the Conservatory of Amsterdam recognized that they did not prepare their students optimally. And they decided to, to develop an artist in residence program on the topic of inclusive music education. And the program was an elective course of three days and 11 students participated in that program. Six bachelors in music education, two bachelors in music and three masters in music. Now, the goals of the program were that we wanted the students to discuss the medical and social model, to discuss ableism and stereotyped images of musicians with disabilities and the quality of their music. But we also wanted the students to gain hands-on experience with the accessible music notations, figure notes and motion, but also we wanted them to experience the iPad as a music instrument and we wanted them to get hands-on experience with the music app Thumbjam. Then again, we also wanted them to make compositions for an inclusive music ensemble, and we wanted them to apply new music uh, technology in their compositions. And we also wanted them to perform as a member of an inclusive music ensemble. So as the work with adaptive adapted and assistive music instruments and muse, inclusive music uh, ensembles is still an emerging field in the Netherlands. The conservatory decided to turn to Drake Music Scotland to work with their students. Now this Scottish organization is a leading arts organization and they provide music making opportunities for people with disabilities. So lastly, in line with the disability rights slogan, nothing about us without us, the intention had been to invite the Drake Music Scotland workshop leader with a disability. Yet Corona posed such a health risk that this sadly fell through. So Pete Sparks, the artistic director came from Drake Music Scotland and he took Ali Gillis, a musician and composer with him to do the workshop. And the three days were coordinated by Debbie Korkmacher, and she was the pro project leader from the Conservatory of Amsterdam. However, we also invited Karen van Dijk, a musician of the Dutch Foundation, My Breath, My Music, to join the program. 
Now, initially, two musicians have been invited to play in the inclusive uh, ensemble. However, due to health issues, one of the musicians could sadly not join us at the very last moment. But luckily, Karen was there, and Karen plays the magic flute. And this is an electronic wind instrument that allows her to adjust the pitch by raising or lowering her head. So what was the content of our program? On day one, we discussed the medical and social model of disability with our students. And Drake Music Scotland introduced their fantastic digital orchestra as an example of inclusive music making. But they also introduced the iPad as a music instrument and the music app Bunja. And Karen joined the students. She presented the magic flute and gave an account of her lived experiences as a musician with a disability. On the second day, Drake Music Scotland shared examples from previous projects including the fantastic project Same River Twice, a jazz collaboration with players from the National Youth Jazz Orchestra of Scotland. And I've added a link at the end of the presentation to this wonderful project. They also introduced figure notes and notion, and they invited students to compose a piece of music for an inclusive music ensemble, including the use of iPads and banjo. So on the last day, Drake Music Scotland details the preparation for a performance of an inclusive ensemble. And this actually gave students insight in the barrier that musicians with disabilities can face, ranging from not being able to access a music venue to issues with having enough energy for a dress rehearsal. The students also continued to work on their compositions together with Karin and prepared presentations because they were going to present their um, compositions on the conference, My Music Ability. So now you will see a video and you will see the whole program and you will meet the students who participated in the program, the workshop leaders, you will meet the project leader and Karen van Dijk. If you want to adjust this this bit here, pop this up, and then this and then this is free to. Wij hebben Drake Music Scotland als artist in residence te gast op het Conservatorium van Amsterdam. Zij doen echt fantastisch werk op het gebied van inclusief muziekonderwijs en nemen de studenten een paar dagen mee in hun werkwijze. We learn about methods that are used, including music technology, which allow people with varying disabilities, including very limited range of motion, to be expressive and creative. We've been doing a lot of playing with an app called Thumb Jam. So in a lot of the settings that Drake Music Scotland work in, I think of iPads and specifically the Thumb Jam app as a little bit of a Swiss Army knife. It's adaptable in terms of the notes that are on the screen, how many, and also what sound they're making. You can bijvoorbeeld dingen ook veranderen, de toonsoort veranderen. Ja, kiezen wat voor soort scale je wil hebben. I want you to include thumb jam. Yeah. I want you to include a groove, a beat, or a pattern. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be all the way through. I want you to have some improvisation. Mm -hmm. So, so we're creating a small piece based on the theme that we were given, which is food based. And we are doing it by using our own instruments and technology as well. My main goal uh, in the work I do with Drake Music Scotland is to find ways to share the, the Kind of real enthusiasm and sort of joy I get from making music and I find it even more enjoyable kind of watching other people and being part of a team exploring that sort of wonderful music making. So we're like making, so making a cake, making yeah. something trapped in it and then eventually it, it comes out, out. Yes. with the bacon.
And the baking yeah. could be like, well, we sort of went to this like darker, more minor sound. We've learned about the process that it goes into making these performances. We've also learned a little bit about the logistics involved. Super stressful, want to zijn vier uur bezig geweest met alles op te nemen. Opzetten, en nog steeds deze te niet. Janken. Ja, precies. Karin was echt een genot om mee te werken. We hadden één Zoom call met elkaar gehad. Dus ik wist ook al een beetje met wat voor attitude en met wat voor identiteit ze in het groepsproces zou komen. En ik denk ook dat het de rest ook heel erg is bevallen. No matter what body you have, your mind can be open and cool and you can do everything you want only with a little more accessible um, equipment. So that's what's happening with the breath. Isn't it? Yeah, there's a gyroscope in it, so I can move my head up and then the notes go up high and I can move my head down, notes go down. We were able to perform with Karen. Uh, it was just a real eye opener for me because there was no, um, the music was exactly of the quality that it would have been had it been all able bodied musicians. She was a completely professional and an amazing person to work with. And I can transpose uh, one octave up. Mm -hmm. Als je gewoon muzikant bent en je kan muziek maken, kan je samen muziek maken zonder dat je elkaar kent. En dat muziek heel erg verbindt. En dat weet je altijd. Um, dat heb je ergens in je achterhoofd, maar toch als je het weer ervaart. Dan komt het toch wel weer meer binnen. Dus dat leer ik er dan weer van. Finding ways for artists to work together filters through to how we how we think about each other and, and seeing disabled musicians working alongside um, what people would think of as mainstream musicians makes a very valid and very strong point that actually you know people can work together in a, in a much more harmonious way. Nobody is a more a higher status member of these ensembles. It's like it's, there's more than one way for everyone to contribute, which has really opened my eyes. <laughs> So what did the students learn from this project? One student said it was an eye opener for me personally, not only because this was my first time working with a person with a disability, but also because you mainly look at the things that are possible instead of not possible. Another student said music made with digital instruments is actually not lesser music. And another student said to actively work to include people who are excluded from being able to make music. And personally, I love this quote because the project sparked something of uh, a sense of activism in the student who now really wanted to actively include people. However, what did the students want to learn more? One student said, I can still learn a lot about how digital instruments work. Another student said, I've learned little about the composition process for the group of people with disabilities. I would like to learn how to guide that process. And another student said, I would gain from some hands-on experience by observing someone else leading musical sessions to then be fully confident in doing it myself. So what is the follow-up of this program? And I would like to show you just how the program has impacted at the individual level of a student. So the master student half will work with Rona Smith. 
a great musician who, because of her disability, makes music with a switch. And Rona mainly chooses harp sounds. And together with Rona, this student will explore how the digital harp and acoustic, acoustic harp can work together creatively. And the conservatory will support this student financially to do this project. However, we will also start with an elective course for all the students of the conservatory uh, in Amsterdam in September 2022. And during this uh, course, students will learn different perspectives on disability and how those perspectives actually might influence the way they work. We want students to become acquainted with innovative music educational practices with and for children or adults with disabilities. But we also want students to design and execute musical activities for a music practice with and for children or adults with disabilities of their own choice. Lastly, the year program has been evaluated by the students, the musician with a disability, the workshop leaders of Great Music Scotland, and the project leader. And we ask them, what are the perceived learning outcomes of such a program for all the participants? But also, what are the recommendations for improving similar programs in the future? So we hope to write an article uh, about the whole program and to submit the article to a music educational journal. So look out for that article. So lastly, if you want more information about this project, you can find information uh, at the following link, links about Drake Music Scotland, about figure notes, about My Breath, My Music, and about the research group Arts Education at Amsterdam. So lastly, thank you so much for listening to this presentation, and I really look forward to your questions and I would love to hear your perspectives on this project.